Hi guys, welcome back to my Aussie story. My name is Janina Sherry and for today we'll be discussing the seven jobs in Australia that I think are easy to get, even for us immigrants. Okay, so I think it was about a few months ago when the Australian borders have opened after being closed for a long while. Just like almost every other country across the globe, Australia was closed due to the restrictions caused by the pandemic. When Australia finally opened, it welcomed immigrants of all kinds, such as international students, families and skilled workers. Naturally, a big number of these newly arrived migrants would be needing employment to support themselves. Some are probably still looking for one though, unfortunately. Okay, just to clarify, although yes, these are jobs that are easy to get, they mostly involve difficult work. I also want to highlight that this is not a list of jobs for migration purposes, but instead these are jobs that you can easily have when you're already here. And lastly, although many immigrants in Australia do start off with the jobs on this list, it doesn't mean that these are the only ones that you can secure as a migrant here, because there are many other variables to be considered. So first off, we have entry-level jobs in the food and hospitality industry. This would mainly be in restaurants, cafes, and fast food or takeaway shops. Jobs in the food and hospitality industries are probably the easiest jobs to get amongst the ones in this list, as even high school students are able to get them. I'm talking about positions such as being a fast food crew, kitchen hand, dishwasher, also known as dishy, and as an all-rounder. They usually don't require applicants to have industry experience nor qualifications, so yeah, that's a plus, but the work is fast-paced and unfortunately the working conditions aren't the best. So something to keep in mind is the fact that a lot of new immigrants, most notably international students, fall prey to wage theft and exploitation. I have actually experienced this myself in some of my previous work when I was employed in a small restaurant and then once again in a fast food place. So though it is rampant, it's not always the case, so don't be discouraged, but definitely, definitely be vigilant. Anyway, there are a lot of vacancies available in this industry. You can even find positions being advertised by simply walking around the food courts and shopping centers. Alright, so our next are the aged care and disability industries. So unlike the others in this list, you'd most likely need some sort of qualification to be employed in the disability or aged care. That would usually be at least a certificate 3 in individual support. Completing a Certificate 3 is fairly easy and usually only takes a couple of months. If you're eligible, you can even do it for free, so yeah. If you want to know more, I actually wrote about government-funded Cert 3s on my website. I will put the link in the description box below if you're interested. But yeah, these are very in-demand roles. There are actually a lot of immigrants working as a carer or as a disability support worker here in Australia from what I've noticed. And usually the positions are initially offered on a casual basis, but would over time and with good performance be turned into a permanent position. Also, you have a choice of either working in a residential facility or out in the community. I actually have experience working in both. I used to work as an aged care worker at a residential facility, more commonly known as nursing homes. But in my opinion, working in a residential facility is a little bit more full on. Some of the tasks involved in this role are assisting the residents with their personal care. So this means that you'll help them with showering, oral care, changing of continence aids. So those are nappies, meal preparation, manual handling, and more. You would usually have to care for multiple residents and complete many tasks within a very limited amount of time. It's physically demanding. Now, if you work in dementia care, it can very well test your mental health too. Personally, it was all too much for me to handle and doesn't really pay well enough for what it is in my opinion. 
On the other hand, we have working in the community. So this one is so much easier from what I've experienced. The clients aren't as high needs as the ones in residential care. In my current work as a disability support worker, none of my clients have ever needed my assistance with showering or managing incontinence. The majority of my work is just driving them around to wherever they want to go, accompanying them, giving them reminders, and maybe some light housework, but barely ever. To work in the community, you would need a driver's license and be willing to use your own car for work. Third on our list are cleaning jobs. So there are different kinds of cleaning jobs. You can be a cleaner at a hotel, school, office, residential houses, or industrial sites. The tasks differ slightly depending on where you work, but all would involve cleaning, obviously. Um, you can apply directly or through agencies. Prior experience aren't usually necessary but you'd most likely be required to have a driver's license and use your own car for, for this one too, as well as an ABN. If you're applying as a school cleaner, you would also be required to have a blue card. Okay, so our next one is factory work. There are a number of different industries in which the factory you'd work for might belong to. It could be in food, logistics, automotive, pharmaceutical, etc. The nature of your work as well as the requirements of the job may slightly differ depending on which industry the factory is for as well as in which area in the factory you'll be working at, but most would involve machine operation and a lot of manual handling. Working at a factory is fast paced, exhausting, and requires you to do the same exact stuff over and over all of the time. So some of you probably know that I currently live in a regional city called Rockhampton. To those who have not heard of Rockhampton, it is known to be the beef capital of Australia. So as you would imagine, we do have a lot of jobs available in the meatworks here. But from what I've heard, it is very hard work and is physically demanding. Their work may involve butchering, cleaning different areas, so like bloody areas, like areas with a lot of blood, packing, and more. There are shifts available 24-7 and most don't require any qualifications or industry experience. So, yeah. Okay, now on to something that is most popular amongst backpackers, farm work. Farm work is usually short term and is a job that is mostly located in the regional and rural areas. The work may revolve around fruit picking, working on a cattle station, or packing. There are employers who would also offer food and accommodation. The pay is either based on the amount harvested or per hour. As you would imagine, working in a farm can be difficult, especially with the Australian sun. Um, this industry is currently facing a labor shortage. Right now, there are also job vacancies in retail and supermarkets, although not as abundant as the ones previously mentioned. The work still involves manual handling, but it isn't as strenuous as the ones we've discussed. It's fairly easy to get a job in retail, but some vacancies would require previous retail experience. Now, if you're planning to apply for a job in the bigger supermarkets, you can just do so online through their website, but there are also those who would have a sign that says apply within. A good way to get your foot in the door is to apply for seasonal positions. So maybe like seasonal positions are advertised maybe around a month or two prior Christmas. So yeah, but if you walk around the shopping centers right before the holidays, you would see plenty of stores looking for seasonal employees. So seasonal employees are those who only work for the company during the busy holiday season. Okay, so the last one on our list are food delivery and ride hailing jobs. So these are your Uber, menu log, DoorDash. Yep, so I thought of including this as it is a good source of extra income, but I wouldn't personally do it full time. I have heard that some people do though and still earn enough, so I guess it depends on the person. Um, it's an easy job where you pick up and drop off 
people or food. Uh, the hours are very flexible since you're basically self-employed. If you want to do this, you'd need an ABN and you'd also be using your own car. Um, you get bookings from the app and if you know where to hang around, well then you'll get more bookings. And there you have it, seven easy to get migrant jobs in Australia. As you've probably gathered, they mostly involve hard work and are usually offered on a casual basis. Um, before I let you go, I just want to say that if you're one of the many immigrants who work at or are applying for one of the jobs mentioned, but used to be someone like a lawyer, professor, or manager back in your respective country of origin, uh, don't be ashamed of what you currently do. Don't be ashamed of your hard work and perseverance. Don't lose hope. Instead, keep on working towards whatever it is that you're aiming to achieve. I know you can do it. I'm cheering for you. But yeah, on a less cheesy note, um, in case some of you were wondering, this video here showcases a beautiful beach located in Yapoon. So Yapoon is a coastal town here in central Queensland. So it is about 45 minutes drive from Rockhampton in case some of you are wanting to go for a visit. But yeah, that's it for today. Please like comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, and don't forget to visit myaussiestory.com if you'd like to see more of my journey and experiences in it as an immigrant here in Australia. Thanks for watching. See ya!